Dear learners, welcome to this session on animal quarantine and certification. The learning objectives of this session are to understand the meaning and importance of animal quarantine, to discuss animal quarantine certification services, distinguish import or export procedures for pets, livestock and livestock products with the relevant acts and notifications. What do we mean by animal quarantine? Animal quarantine is a state of enforced isolation. I repeat, it is a state of enforced isolation used to separate and restrict the movements of animals, mostly on health grounds. The term quarantine originates from the Italian word called quaranto giorni, meaning 40 days. During earlier days, 40 days isolation of ships and people to prevent the black death disease of plague was prevalent. So keeping in view, the word quarantine was originated from the Italian word quaranto giorni. If you see the right top corner side of this slide, you will find a pictorial depiction of a ship, which is actually a quarantined ship. It is called Re. On the bottom side, we have an yellow jack, which is international quarantine signal flag with two yellow squares and two black squares. If ship is having this flag hoisted, that means the ship is under quarantine. Why to quarantine animals? You know the increased and faster global trade and travel. Earlier times, uh, the travel time was too long. Animals used to be shipped through the sea routes. Every animal will have uh, an incubation period. Incubation period means uh, the moment uh, the infectious organism, be it a viral, a bacterial or fungal, when it enters into the animal body, it takes time to exhibit the symptoms, usually 21 days or more. By the time the animal is transported through sea route, the animal will exhibit the symptoms and the animals are quarantined during earlier days. But now because of increased and faster global trade and travel, animals are reaching other destinations by air route within hours and even sea route also within days. Therefore, there is an increased emphasis on quarantine of animals. Keeping this in view, animal quarantine certification services is necessary at international airports, seaports and land routes because primarily we have to prevent the entry of exotic livestock diseases. There are examples how effectively we have prevented the entry of exotic livestock diseases. In 2001, we imported rabbits from Germany, but they contain hemorrhagic disease. And in the same year, we imported the smuggled infected pigeons, avian infectious virus with H7N7 strain, and it was found in the smuggled infected pigeons. It was effectively quarantined and we prevented the entry. And in the year 2003, we imported cattle from Australia. They're suffering from MCF, malignant catarrhal fever and BVD, bovine viral diarrhea. These diseases were effectively quarantined because of involvement of HSDAL, that is High Security Animal Disease Laboratory at Bhopal. Because of effective quarantine, we could able to prevent entry of these deadly diseases into India. That's why there is an increased emphasis on quarantining the animals. Coming to the economic importance of animal quarantine, we have uh, increased import as well as exports of foods of animal origin as well as animals themselves. Because of quarantine, it saves the huge resources. The resources includes money, labor and time required in disease eradication program. By chance, if we don't implement the quarantine program, there is every chance that diseases enter into the country and we need to invest huge resources, money, labor and time. Sometimes eradication is not sure. Only prevention is the option. Therefore, we need to implement effective quarantine on importing of livestock and livestock products. While exporting the livestock and livestock products, Quality certification as per the requirement of importing country is at most important. Increasing the demand for livestock and livestock products in the international markets is leading to the exports of foods of animal origin. 
we need to certify that the products are free from the disease as per the international norms. Therefore, our country will be benefited through export of foods of animal origin. Coming to the animal quarantine and certification services. If you see the livestock sector, average livestock sector growth rate in India in the past three decades is about 4%. And livestock sector is contributing about 4.11% to the gross domestic product. And we have huge livestock population of 512 million and 730 million poultry. So there is a significant contribution of livestock sector not only to the economy but to the livelihood security of millions of farmers. Therefore, realizing the importance of animal quarantine certification services to boost the foods trade, during the fourth five-year plan, AQCS, that is Animal Quarantine Certification Services, it's a central sector scheme, was implemented by Government of India with four stations in four metros, Delhi, Chennai, Kolkata and Mumbai. And during the 11th plan, the facility was extended to Hyderabad and Bangalore. What are the objectives of Animal Quarantine Certification Services? As discussed earlier, the AQCS prevent the ingress of exotic livestock diseases through livestock and livestock products as per the provisions of Livestock Importation Amendment Act 2001. And they also provide internationally accepted certification services for augmenting trade of livestock and livestock products. And to inspect and register the mills exporting animal byproducts. These are the objectives of AQCS. Then AQCS function effectively with the help of laboratories in mainly in Indian Council of Agriculture Research and State Agriculture Veterinary Universities. We have HSADL, High Security Animal Disease Laboratory at Bhopal. Recently, this institute was upgraded as a National Institute of High Security Animal Diseases. Earlier, it was part of Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Aizat Nagar, Bareilly. This HSADL Bhopal tests and certifies both livestock and livestock products when we import consignments from outside the country. We have in Hisar NRCE, National Research Center on Equines, especially in horses, donkeys and mules. And we have Central Disease Diagnostic Laboratory at IVRI Bareilly and Regional Disease Diagnostic Laboratories at different parts of country. Apart from these laboratories, we have few veterinary colleges also which are equipped with testing facilities which are assisting animal quarantine certification services. Then what are the livestock and livestock products for import purpose and how they are classified? In India, we have DGFT. Directorate General for Foreign Trade. Directorate General Foreign Trade in consultation with the Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying classify items into three categories. One is the restricted item, second is free items and the third is prohibited items. Under restricted items, we need a license to import those livestock or livestock products from DGFT. Under free items, we call it as SIP, Sanitary Import Permit. It is issued by Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairy. Under the free items, we can import grandparent stock of poultry. For instance, poultry as such comes under restricted item, either poultry or cattle or buffalo, any livestock species. And for that, we need license from DGFT. Whereas to import grandparent stock of poultry to improve the breeding purpose, they are listed under free items. For this, we just need SIP from DAHD. Whereas the third item is prohibited items. In view of the disease status, they are under prohibited items. Example, wild animals as per Wildlife Protection Act 1972. As in today in 2016, there are about 60 items which are listed under DGFT list of items under restricted, free items and prohibited, but it is dynamic in nature and they upgrade and they remove and add items from the list time to time in consultation with DAHD. So dear learners, please refer to DGFT website for more updates on the list of items. Then what are the import procedures in animal quarantine certification services? There are five procedures. 
One is when livestock or livestock product is imported either as a baggage or as a cargo, then immediately it is referred by customs department for animal quarantine clearance. Then the animal quarantine facility examine the health certificates issued in the country of origin and also they see the relevant papers. The livestock are kept under quarantine for observation and testing and livestock products are checked and tested as per the health protocol. If everything is okay, they may issue a provisional clearance or else the livestock and livestock products are sent for the quarantine facility and after due 30 days or 21 days or 40 days as per the product or as per the species of animals, they are cleared. This figure denotes the entire process from the arrival of cargo to clearance. When cargo is arrived, it is notified and then the documents inspection and this will be gone for monitoring test and examination by order and then it will be either rejected or passed. In case of rejected items, there is a possibility of reshipment and sending it back to the country of origin and if the material is deadly, then the customs departments in consultation with the quarantine system, they destruct. For this destruction, every quarantine station will have an incineration facility. Once they are free, then when they are passed, it will go for the finishing and then customs clearance, the consignee can take back this uh, imported items. Then there are import of pets and import of livestock. Let us see first uh, import of pets under which dogs and cats are classified and as per the custom circular number 15 by 2013, two number of dogs or cats are permitted for import. Then what are the procedures? So let us examine these procedures one by one. The pets can be imported either as a baggage or as an unaccompanied baggage. In case of baggage, owner ticket is a must and in case of unaccompanied baggage, passport with immigration stamp within one month of arrival is required and advance custom permission sending of the pet more than one month after their arrival or before arrival then we need to take advance custom permission. In addition to the above, visa copy and documents to establish abroad stay for minimum of two years. They need to establish that the importing person had resided for two years or more in abroad and second is residence transfer proof. These are essential. Coming to the health certificate, the country of origin has to clearly state that the pet is free from clinical symptoms of all infectious diseases and contagious diseases. I repeat, this certificate is very important stating clearly that the pet is free from clinical symptoms of all infectious diseases and clinical diseases. Some of the important uh, diseases in dog includes the rabies, canine distemper, parvovirus infection and leptospirosis and in case of cat, rabies, distemper, feline enteritis, feline panleukopenia and leptospirosis. These are the diseases which have to be specified in addition to any other disease. Dog and cat must be vaccinated against rabies for more than one month but within 12 months prior to actual embarkation. Then the other procedures includes the owner name in health certificate and ticket must be same. They should ensure that in the health certificate as well as their ticket the name should be mentioned and it should be the same and owner name and address in both country origin and arrival on the health certificate should be mentioned. And the owner has to declare that dog or cat is a bona fide pet with no commercial interest or gift or breeding purposes. If this is the case, then they have to go either to the DGFT or to the Department of Animal Husbandry Dairying for either for SIP or for the license. And no additional feed and bedding material is allowed because along with the feed and bedding material, there is a likely chance that the disease may come into India. And copy of airway bill, journey details of pet, bill of entry with the customs and if coming under cargo is required and any other documents if required during examination they need to produce. And in case that if owner is not appro approaching the facility directly, there is a possibility by giving authorization to somebody else. Then under the advanced NOC procedure, 
This NOC can be issued within seven days before arrival based on the self-certified copies of the document. So that hassle-free consignment can be taken away. And original health certificates will be retained by animal quarantine certification services at the time of examination of pet and issue of provisional clearance. In case of doubt, animal may be kept under quarantine observation and final clearance will be issued after 30 days. There is a increased smuggling, smuggling of pets also uh, through the international travel. Recently on July 17th in 2016 in Indira Gandhi airport, uh, the customs officials, uh, they caught smuggling dogs in check-in baggage. The passengers, they sedated the dog and it was packed in the check-in baggage and in the x-ray checking, uh, they found unconscious dog. Apart from a punishable offense, this also attracts uh, the cruelty against animals under animal welfare laws also. So we need to be very, very careful while importing the pets uh, and we need to follow prescribed procedures. And coming to the import of livestock, valid DGFT, Director General of Foreign Trade License or Sanitary Import Permit is required and Bill of Entry with Custom Reference is required and Health Certificate from Origin Country Fulfilling Health Guidelines of India is required, Identification Detail, Sheet Number, Passport Number and Origin Detail to be mentioned in Health Certificate. Laboratory reports, but they may not be mandatory, but if possible, they can obtain the laboratory reports. The owner name and address in health certificate must match with the license or sanitary import permit. Recently on August 4, 2016, a Pune based cattle farm had imported 13 Chicago Holstein Frisian bulls to improve the productivity. But as per the requirement of animal quarantine, now they are, were sent to the Mumbai quarantine facility and if everything is correct, then they will be released. Then import of livestock other procedures. No additional feed and bedding material is required as stated earlier because feed and bedding material may carry contagious diseases. And undertaking and declaration copy of airway bill or journey detail of animal is required and original health documents are mandatory on arrival. Then authorization letter, if owner is not approaching directly, is also possible. And advance NOC issued in seven days of arrival based on self-certified advance copies of all the above documents. And animal quarantine certification services will retain the health certificate at provisional clearance on arrival. The final clearance will be issued as per the quarantine rules and regulations. Dear learners, so far we discussed the meaning of animal quarantine, the importance of animal quarantine and AQCS facilities and the different items which are classified by the DGFT and import procedures for the pet as well as livestock. Let us see the import procedures of livestock products now. We need to have a valid DGFT license or SIP that is sanitary import permit, bill of entry with custom reference, health certificate from the country of origin, description of livestock product in health certificates, laboratory reports if applicable, name and address of the consignee and consigner in health certificate must match with the license or SIP and custom sealed samples or examination or sampling is required and undertaking and declaration as per the requirement of law is necessary. Then the different procedures for export of livestock and livestock products. We have examined the different procedures for import of livestock and livestock products but the procedures for export is also almost same in nature but we need to conform to the health requirements of the importing country and their health regulations because every country they have their own requirements, own regulations and we need to check with their animal quarantine certification services before exporting. And also OEE has mentioned Office International Epigeotica has prescribed these standards in the International Jew Sanitary Code. Then what are the different uh, acts and notifications through which our AQCS are governed. They are governed by Livestock Importation Act 1898 but from time to time we have amended this act. Livestock Importation Amendment Act in 1953, Livestock Importation Amendment Bill 2003 which is also called as 
Livestock Importation Amendment Act 2001. In this act earlier there was a mention about only livestock and now during the amendment they also added the word and livestock products after the word livestock which came into effect from 5th July 2001. And different notifications on health guidelines and procedures, restriction of livestock products 2001, inclusion of aquatic animals and products under livestock products in 2001. Regulations for import of bovine salmon in 2007, restriction of livestock products in 2008, regulation for import of pet food in 2008, and regulation for import of raw hides in 2009, regulation for import of equines in 2012. Then also there is livestock import procedures uh, notification in 2014. Then what are the facilities uh, should be there and available in animal quarantine stations? In order to function effectively, they should have a laboratory that is useful for routine tests as well as to process and dispatch samples for the advanced laboratory testing. And they should have animal sheds and isolation sheds species wise and a dispensary, changeover room, postmortem room, incinerator, disposal area and horse paddock should be there and loading and unloading platform, vehicle dip or wash, disinfection and fumigation facilities and backup power supply must be contained in all animal quarantine stations. You can see the photographs of uh, animal quarantine facility in Chennai and on the right and left side. Then what are the different entry protocols in quarantine stations? Dress code and quarantine regulations are must. Eatables, smoking and tobacco is strictly prohibited and riding or playing with the animals is strictly prohibited and wet and para wet, they are the direct handlers, they should enter into the facility only after taking shower and change of dress, either owner of the pet or livestock or veterinarian or para veterinarian must not visit any animal farm or contact any animal at least 24 hours before and after the visit. This is for effectively preventing transmission of diseases. And these are different charges at quarantine stations because uh, we need to conduct some test and we need to feed the animals. So the animal quarantine facilities they charge but these charges are dynamic in nature and 10% increase every year on 1st January is implemented. You can see the Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying website time to time for the revised charges. Dear learners, if you wish to read further in Government of India, Department of Animal Husbandry Dairying issued Animal Quarantine Certification Services Circulars. They contain Animal Quarantine Certification Services Stations of India and Standard Operating Protocols for Animal Quarantine Certification Stations and Requirement of Documents or Procedures for Filling Applications at AQCS Office for Import or Export Clearance of both Livestock and Livestock Products. You can see the link here, otherwise you can simply type AQCS in search engine, then you will get these documents. Also at the international level, OIE, which is uh, World Organization for Animal Health and in French it is pronounced as Office International Epigeotica, they have come out with Terrestrial Animal Health Code. Every year they upgrade and 2016 Terrestrial Animal Health Code is available in OIE website. Under Terrestrial Animal Health Code, we have volume 1 and section 5 deals with uh, import and export of animals internationally as well as for testing of quarantine. You can see these documents uh, for more information and my presentation is also mostly based on these documents. And to sum up, in this session we discussed the meaning of animal quarantine, the objectives of animal quarantine and economic importance of animal quarantine. We also discussed in this presentation animal quarantine certification services and import or export procedures for pets, livestock and livestock products with relevant acts and notifications. You can reach me at pbksasidhar at the rate ignu.ac.in for any feedback or further queries. Have fun in learning.